All right. Welcome, Living Long Beach listeners. We are here uh, at the Chandra Group on the corner of Atlantic and Marshall, across from the FedEx Kinkos in lovely Bixby Knowles. This is, uh, my name is Mark Chandra. I'm joined by my brother, Adam. Hi, how are you, everyone? And we are excited to bring you a new episode of Living Long Beach. So, as you know, this is a show that focuses on buying and selling real estate here in the Long Beach, Southern California area. And we have been getting a lot of questions and a lot of comments and actually interacting with a lot of clients these days on short sales. So, today is episode 28, Short Sales Unraveled. What do you think of that? I like it. Unravel. Like it. We're going to give you the inside scoop. The folks. inside scoop. Exactly. The reality. We've talked about short sales in the past, um, but I think today what we're going to really do is get right to the heart of it and um, let's go. Yeah. So, uh, what do we want to start with? Well, um, what is a short sale? Do you want to jump into that or do you want to do some numbers? Want to let's do... do the numbers. We'll get that out of the way and then we'll do uh, the short sales. All right. So, the numbers. Um, you guys know the numbers. This week, instead of actually doing weekly numbers, I'm going to go ahead and talk about some monthly numbers for the month of May. All right, so I just thought it'd be interesting to give, uh, let me turn this down a little bit there. All right, I thought it'd be interesting to give uh, you an idea of where we are month over a prior year. So this ye- uh, month, month of May, there are 417 new properties. The average list price for those properties is 417000 There was 300 properties sold, and the average sale price was 354000 and the day, days on market is about 88. That is about a 10% decrease over last year in uh, new. And then uh, the other interesting aspect is sold. This time last year, there were only 245 homes sold in the month of May, where this year there's 300. So despite what you're hearing about activity, really? there is a lot of good buyer activity. Yes. Other than that, the numbers are more or less a wash. Um, one of the things that I thought would be interesting also is to look at where we were in May of 05. Okay. Right, so in May of 05, there were 534 properties coming out on the market every month. The average list price in the month of May was 556. That's a 25% uh, difference over where we're at today. Sold price was 425,000 versus the, the uh, I'm sorry, number of properties sold in the month of May was 425 versus the 300 this month. The average price in May of 05 for Long Beach, yes, $513,000. So we are down in price 31% over 2005. And then this is the best part. Days on market? 2005. 2005. All right. All right. Best part, how long were they taking to sell in 2005? 13 days. <laughs> Close. Very good. 33. 33. 33 days versus the 89 now. 89 so now. basically, all in all, the only thing you can really determine from any of these numbers is that uh, there's still a significant amount of buyer activity out there, and there's still a lot of homes being sold in Long Beach. There is, but it, it, it's in a we're in a weird point right now where we're seeing multiple offers on our listings, right? I mean, and you know, you representing buyers, right? Buyers are I'm hearing from my other agents in the office, ten they're having like ten, twelve, fifteen offers just to get one accepted, and then that's a short sale that you don't know is it going to close or not. So here we go in the way of sold properties. So of the properties that were sold, the three hundred that were sold, so fifty nine of them were short sales. 65 of them were REOs and 134 of them were standard sales. That's about what we're seeing, huh? Ah, so standard sales is still a significant Standard sales or equity, people mm-hmm. that actually own their home with a little bit of equity in it. We call them equity sales here. That's pretty funny. So folks, those are the numbers. All right, great. So I think what we're seeing right now in the market is really interesting. You know, I think we should talk about that just a little bit because we're in a weird point now where we have the elections going on. November. Exactly, yep. right around the corner, okay? We have a huge settlement that just happened with the attorney generals and most of the major banks, I think six or so of the major banks for a $65 billion settlement. That is money that is supposed to go into doing loan modifications, doing, mm-hmm. doing principal reduction programs, doing a lot of things to help homeowners stay in their home and ultimately probably still be somewhat underwater or in another bad financial situation, huh? Right. I mean, it's crazy, you know? I I don't entirely understand what the motive is. I think a lot of it really is just to keep the banks with clients longer so you have a house that you're living in a house that's underwater longer, right? Well, I think one of the things that I've seen about all of these is whether it's a loan model or what have you, they're all basically 
stall tactics to the inevitability. Exactly. Which is the individual has to get out of that mortgage. Whether right. it's a loan mod, even even some of the people that I talk to, the loan mods aren't. They're six months in, and then they're back right back to where they started. They're a year in, right back to where they started. So, most of these situations, you just you just you got to get out from underneath the debt. Right. So, you know, really, what we want to talk about is it's in this show, and I think what's gonna we're gonna talk about is what to do if your property is underwater. Right. You know, if your home is, you know, you paid five hundred thousand dollars for it, and it's now worth three hundred thousand dollars, and you can tell by just going on Zillow or watching right. your neighbor across the street what they <laughs> sell, right? Right, absolutely. Um, or call me, which a lot of people do when yeah. you're in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, uh, or you have an investment property that's in a similar situation where mm -hmm. you know you pay more than it's worth, or you just owe more than it's worth. Now it's a time to get out from underneath that debt. Like, and when we say now. We mean like yes, now, today, now, like this this month, like yeah. the Before window the end is of the calendar year. The transaction is, needs to close is so small. Um, we know that it takes at least three months to close a short sale, and then you know it takes you three almost three months to sell it. So literally, you got to get going. So let's talk about um, why people. Let's well, first of all, again, we kind of talked about we're talking about people who are underwater. Anybody who owes the value of their property is less than they owe. So what do we think are the biggest reasons why people are not taking advantage of some of the programs out there and why people are not short selling their property? Well, first of all, you know, I want to back up just a little bit. And so a short sale, just so people know, is a short sale is when you sell your home for less than you owe on it, right? right. And so it's essentially a debt forgiveness program. You know, And what that means is if you owe you know, three hundred thousand dollars on a first. You know, two hundred thousand dollars on a second. You might have some back taxes. You might, if you're in an HOA, you might owe some HOA dues, right? Mm -hmm. What you do is you get that property sold. Let's say that total amount of debt that you owe on that individual house is five hundred thousand dollars, but it's all, and you sell it for three hundred thousand dollars. A short sale is when the bank allows you to write those debts off. And what's great is if you live in the state of California, you can also write those off without a deficiency judgment or any tax obligation if it's a principal residence bought within certain certain times. So that's what a short sale is. Right. Okay? So why would you want to do one then, right? Why would you want to risk your credit, you know, your, the embarrassment of, you know, having to get rid of a property or what would be the reason? So let's talk a little bit about the financial. Why don't we go through a scenario, Adam, maybe of a home that was bought. I think you have some numbers there, right? Yeah, I got two different homes, two different markets, uh, both uh, bought around the same time. So let's take the first one, which is a little bit more closer to the average. Purchase price uh, in 2005 was $450,000. There was about $50,000 worth of capital improvement on the property. So this was back in, uh, again, 2005. That same house in 2012 sold for 335000 so at that point in time, it was a loss of $165,000. Yeah, and that's a lot of money. That's, <clears throat> not only that, that is um, that is a significant percentage. I mean, it's 30% or so, right? Right. So, and then more importantly, what we looked at was um, how long is it going to take for that property, that exact same property, to reach that initial sales price of 2005? And uh, Mark and I kind of did the numbers. We went back and forth arguing about uh, what appreciation to use. So, and yada, 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 we ultimately settled on 4%. So, assuming that you have an average appreciation for 4%, it will take you seven years to regain and get back to that 450000 Right, assuming that um, the market starts turning to, around right, right now, correct. today. That's right. Right, and As of today, an you average that 4 appreciation. Right. Okay. So, um, again, not only are you looking at a loss of So, seven years. Let's talk about that. Years. Seven <laughs> years, right? Uh, let's talk about seven years. Seven long years. time. Well, you know, it is and it isn't, right? It's a long time if you're 50 years old, right? And you're hoping to retire, right? Before you're hoping to 60, retire at 55. 65. Yeah. Exactly, right? I hear you It's on especially that. a long time if, you know, you're my age. I'm 40, right? And right. seven more years, you're working longer. <laughs> uh, you know, so... Seven years, you know, a lot of people don't think it's very long, but essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trading your life for the seven years. Because right. I think we almost all agree that if you want to retire, if you know, a lot of people they buy a house for financial investment, right? right. They buy it for security. Okay? It's their ultimate pension. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, you know, so to do that, you need to pay it off. You essentially need to li eliminate that living expense from your monthly expenses, right? right? Otherwise, you're going to be paying rent. 
mm -hmm. or a mortgage, right? right? Which is a lot of times 30 to 40% of someone's income. Mm -hmm. okay? And if you want to retire, you're obviously... Yeah, that's being good. conservative. Like okay. Want, we're right. Okay. We're exactly. So, so, um, where was I? <laughs> well, that's the finances of a short sale. So if you look at that in the financial aspect of the short sale, um, and looking at the numbers, if you're underwater in your loan, um, short sale is definitively an option. Otherwise, you're looking at basically seven years to get to ground zero. Right, get to ground zero. Okay, so the alternative is a short sale. So right. an alternative would be, you know, that you get rid of the property. Right. Right, it affects your credit. Right. Okay, you have to rent probably, you know, and for somewhere, you know, it depends. If you're late on your mortgage, you can actually buy a property with FHA guidelines in about 18 to 24 months. This is after you short sold it. After right? you short sold it, right? Or if you want to go with a low money down loan again, it's going to take three to four years to fix right. your credit, okay? So you could essentially be buying your house back, right, in four years. And the reality is the market's probably not going to go up three or four percent over the well, next couple of years. That's what we're seeing. I mean, we're looking at it, we would agree with you, pretty much going to be flatlining for a while. So right. let's say we even, optimistically speaking, we got the elections coming up, we've talked about that. This year is more or less going to be a wash. Next year, we'll probably, if it's all good, we'll see some growth. So exactly. I would agree with you. So, um, yeah, you can get the ground zero in three years, which and is pretty the, impressive. Right. And the ch one of what, what I'm hearing, though, like here's an example. You know, you might be sitting on a mortgage where you're paying three or $4,000, where right now you could rent that exact same home, maybe even a nicer yeah. home, for significantly less, right. right? Right. Yeah, we didn't even do the mortgage payments. Yeah, I mean that's these. that's yeah. the crazy thing is a lot of people are straddled with really high payments. Right. You know, so how fun is it to have a high mortgage, right? I mean, how have a high house payment, and know you're not really reducing the principal. In fact, your home is depreciating. Right. So, so the option is a short sale. Okay. So, so homework for listeners: if you own a home uh, and you think you're underwater, you thought about short selling it. Go ahead and do the math and figure out what your difference is what the price you could sell the property is today and how long it would take you to get back to what you owe on the property. And uh, you'll most likely see it's probably going to be five to six years. So think about that. So that's the finances. What are the other issues? What are the other fears? What are the potential drawbacks of, uh, if any, uh, or misconceptions of short selling your home? Well, let's, let's go through a couple of things that I hear a lot when I'm talking to clients, sitting down with them at the kitchen table and kind of going up some of their options. You know, if you're in a condominium, for example, right. uh, a lot of people are worried about the HOA fees, mm -hmm. okay? And if they haven't paid their taxes, they're worried about the taxes. What's great is in a lot of short sales, the banks will allow you to negotiate on the sale of your home to include those back pack taxes and HOA dues in the sale so that you can walk away without having to come up with the money to cure those. Right. Okay? Which is huge. And in some cases, huge. it's four to $5,000. Exactly. We talked a little bit about the credit, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, FHA guidelines are written that if you, you can actually short, I don't know if you knew this, but if you can actually short sell a house, and if you're not delinquent, move greater than 100 miles away and buy another house with an FHA loan. No, I didn't know that. So the reality is you can actually sell something that's a couple mm -hmm. hundred thousand dollars underwater and relocate to a new property mm -hmm. right away. So that's best case scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario is a couple of three, four years, okay? However, if you let the property go into foreclosure, seven years. Seven years, right. You know? Yeah. You file yeah. bankruptcy, seven right. years. So uh, as you guys all know, I'm a buyer's agent, and I would have to say from the some of the clients that I'm working with, it is absolutely two years on the dot. It is. People are jumping back in, aren't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, so people that have kind of taken advantage of this way to get out from under this debt, are already back in the market right. buying. Two years, with FHA yeah. financing. And what's interesting is I'm meeting with uh, Ron Brown tomorrow, one of our clients, uh, and he's got a program, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in the next shows, where they're doing hard money loans, which means a private loan mm -hmm. to someone that had to short sell their property. So a lot of times what's happening is people are getting out on a short sale round, and they're walking away with a couple hundred thousand dollars in the pocket in a few years, because they haven't had to pay that big debt. Yeah, they've and been then they're going down, and then they're going around, and they're buying a house. They're putting a big amount of money down, and then they're using yeah. private money to buy it, kind of streamlining the whole FHA financing. Right. Okay. The other thing that I'm seeing is, you know, we talked about the credit, the financial obligations. I think we went over. You know, there's a lot of benefit from getting away from a property that you're heavily indebted with, so moving to something that you can actually one day own. <laughs> which would well, be let's nice. assume that everybody learned their lesson. Well, you know, it's like Dave Ramsey says. You know the the um, 
you know, the new BMW status symbol now is a paid off house. Yes. Okay. So, you know, I think we all need to get down there. And the other one, you know, we hear a lot is, is you know, people have a moral or an ethical dilemma and they're really worried, you know, and, and which, you know, I think rightly so, you know, they signed, you know, they, you know, they went out, they actively bought a house, you know, right. they put down a deposit, they signed 30, Two inches 40, worth of 50, work. exactly, or yeah. the loan documents, yeah. and they're like, well, you know, I made a moral obligation to pay this debt, and I'm going to make it happen. And, you know, I can appreciate that, and I think that's something to definitely consider, you know, but you also, in a lot of ways, you have an obligation to provide for your family, right? Right, well, not only that, I think the, yes, you have an obligation, for, not only that, uh, buying a home is, uh, yes, it is a home, it is, you know, where the heart is, where you raise your, raise your family and so forth, but as we've already mentioned on a couple of uh, occasions, it's also, for most people, their re retirement package. And if it's their retirement package, it needs to be looked at as the financial investment that it is. Exactly. And bad debt needs to be disposed of as quick as possible if you expect to have any type of return. Well, and that's what I mean by providing for your, for right. your family. You know, you need to take advantage of the laws that are put in place now to save for your retirement, to put yourself yeah. in good, get out of debt, get debt free, and put your family in a situation where, you know, they can, you know, have mm -hmm. a you know, comfortable life, you know, a higher quality of life. You know, and, you know, we see this in corporate America all the time, right? You know, where, you know, an example that everyone knows is, you know, American Airlines, well, not everyone knows, but a lot of people are familiar with American Airlines, which is one of our largest, you know, it's even got the word America in it, mm -hmm. largest airlines filed for bankruptcy a couple of years ago, 18 months or so, and they had over $2 billion still in the bank, you know? Yeah. They weren't burning through their retirement to... Right. to continue paying and servicing right. their debt. You know, they weren't cashing in their 401k. Right. They weren't cashing in their rainy check fund to support their debt. What they did is they filed bankruptcy, they restructured, and they're, you know, they're right. back in business. Right, and I gotta tell you, I've seen that. I've seen a couple of the worst case scenarios where uh, they do do exactly what the worst case scenario is, which is they don't act on the short sale. They burn through their savings, and as a result, they have to actually go back to work and in the end, uh, if they're not diversified, they really don't end up having a retirement at all. No, exactly. You know, and a lot of people I've seen have taken from the retirement, right? Right. So, and um, you know, you know, you really need to take in consideration, you know, the bigger picture. You right. really need to look at the big picture. And a lot of people are emotionally attached to their house, right. which I can, of course, understand as well. You right. know, so, you know, you spend a lot of time there. You do a lot of work, and going back, and this is what we hear a lot. You know, honestly, is that um, I, I can't be a renter. You know, I don't want to rent. Right. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I hear that a lot, you know, and, you know, sure, so you know, you, you basically, so you know, know. that's about it, you know, you find a great, find a nicer house. Right. <laughs> that's basically what it boils down to, and you'd be surprised at what you can find out there. Uh, and I, I would agree, I would agree. So, so the rental market re remains robust, because you would be surprised at the number of, you know, the bottom line is this, Adam, 50% of the homes in the United States do not have a mortgage. They're owned free and clear. Right. right. They're owned by families. They're owned right. by trusts. They're owned by, um, you know, investors. They're mm -hmm. owned by large companies. They're owned mm -hmm. by REITs. You know, mm -hmm. they have no debt. Right. You know, and you know, you can move into a house that's maybe nicer than yours. And guess what? The water, you know, the, the pipes break. Guess you don't have to fix that's it. That's right. I, I would agree with you. I would agree. There are benefits yeah. of, uh, of right. renting. And again, it's two years. So, you know, uh, it's really not that much of a time. So let's talk about the last issue that a lot of people are always concerned about in regards to uh, doing a short sale or getting out of bad debt in general, which is basically what kind of recourse. What, what are they really going to be? When everything is ultimately said and done, what are they really going to be on the hook for? Good question. You know, a lot of people are like, what's going to cost me? How much? Uh, I would agree with you. <laughs> How much? How much? How yeah. much? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I signed a bunch of papers in the beginning, and I didn't get to a good place. So where what are going to be now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I lost a lot of money too. That's right. Right. You know. Well, you know, ideally, you know, and this is mainly, you know, cause we actually have a lot of listeners around the country besides just living Long Beach here locally. You That's know, true. we're talking. So I want to let people know, first of all, you know, that this is pertains to California, mm -hmm. and the other disclaimer is I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not right. an accountant. Right. You know, right. I'm a real estate broker. My uh, E&O insurance is only a million dollars, so you can't sue me for any of this information or knowledge. However, we can guide you in the right place. So, you, you know, it is important, though, to have a good accountant uh, take care of this because there's a lot of things. So there's a couple of things. Number one is, 
you have the recourse, you know. And what's great is, you know, in California, there is no recourse on primary residences with the original purchase money. Okay, mm -hmm. so what that means, and essentially in almost any residential real estate mortgage in the state of California, there's no recourse, which means that if you get rid of the property, they can, cannot come after you for additional money. Right. The other thing people are worried about is taxes, you know. If, mm -hmm. you know, if the bank gifts me this couple hundred thousand dollar forgiveness, you know, that's You're talking taxable about annual taxes. Talking about federal taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And state taxes for right. that matter. Right. Well, again, the good news is the federal government has given us a gift and this is why it is so important now to take advantage of this because the 2000 and 2007 Mortgage Debt Relief Act, which is what President Bush signed, expires at the end of this year. And what that means is if you short sell a property or you're going to foreclosure, you know, and you have, you know, you get $200,000 written off prior to this legislation, that would be taxable. $200,000. Wait, 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 hang on. Remember that example that we gave earlier in the show? Which feels like about an hour ago. <laughs> the four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right? So that was a loss. That example included a loss of one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars, right? So technically speaking, you would have to claim that as income. Ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nine. <laughs> and let's say let's assume twenty percent. No, no, well no, that's gonna push you into the high tax bracket, okay. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know you're thirty five percent federal. Right. So times that by uh So we're talking twenty three five, right? So um, you are looking at your tax bill on that situation after 2013. It's going to be fifty-seven thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, at, at the end of this year, if they right. don't renew it, that's right. correct. Yeah, it's around fifty thousand right. dollars, right? Yeah, you would have to pay that if you let the property right. go into foreclosure or did a short sale next year, right. theoretically. Right. Absolutely. So think about that. So uh, right now, there there is no um, state recourse, which I think will stay in play even after 2013. Yeah. That's California. Yeah, Joe, California. That's right. But in regards to um, recourse, in regards to taxes, which any type of debt forgiveness is perceived as income, would be taxed at your standard rate. And like uh, Mark was saying, uh, most of these people, it's going to push them into a higher tax bracket. So uh, your recourse after 2013 is going to be quite significant. Not after 2000, after this year. After, after I'm sorry, 2012. Year. It's going to be pretty significant. So right. wow. Well, the other thing is this. This is the other thing. You know, the attorney generals are, you know, <clears throat> had this settlement with a lot of the major six lenders, okay? And part of it is, is that a lot of the banks are looking at principal reductions, which we haven't seen, so that'll be interesting to see well, how that I plays out. I, I, when right? we talk to a lot of people, right. and right. I have but not seen it either. But the other thing is, Bank of America right now is offering between fifty and $30,000 to you, Mr. Borrower, right? Bring it. Mm -hmm. to short sell your property mm -hmm. and close escrow within a certain period of time yes. to help with your relocation. Right. Right. That's money that you can use to go to Target. Right. Fill, you know, right. uh, that's money that you can use to offer as a deposit in your first month's rent on your new property. Yeah, that's money relocation. And, and we have a lot of, pro well, when you have the national program out there with Hoffa, and we were seeing that actually go through, it's a little bit slower, but we are seeing it go through. We are seeing people get the relocation assistance. They are getting out with no money out of their pocket. And then, of course, Bank of America has a co-op program, which is very similar. Yep. And um, again, a lot of people talk about, you know, short sales are becoming more streamlined. They, they are. They, they're moving. We are seeing it. We see it every single month. Uh, you know, we track this data. We see when a property goes on the market. We see when it closes uh, um, at the end. And, and they are moving fast. So uh, again, this is, this is your window. You have... Uh, less than a month to really kind of make the decision, pull things together and, and give us a call. If you have thought about short selling your house, uh, now now is the time. Right, and let, let me tell you why, real quickly, I gotta give a pitch to why we're the ones that you wanna to talk to, you know? Uh, prior to getting into- Isn't it obvious? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it is, it's just because we're doing the podcast doesn't qualify us. Uh, fair enough. Um, the reason is we're set up for this, you know. We've done a lot. We do a lot of transactions. These are heavily, um, what should I say? They're high-touch transactions, right? So that means you're dealing a lot of times with several different 
debtors, including, like I talked to HOA, you're dealing mm -hmm. with, maybe you have a Bank of America first, you have a Wells Fargo second, you have, you have, you know, you have something with Litton that's now been sold to Aquin, you know, right. you've had, you had a Wa Wachovia mm -hmm. loan that was then transferred to Wells Fargo, oh. I mean, they're all over the place, right? So you have all of these crazy different lenders and servicers, and they require constant vigilance. Our office is set up to pound on them on a regular right. basis. You've got to beat these banks to move them forward. Right. You know, you have to jump through all the hoops. So the reason is we're, we're and we're having great success with them. You know, last client we got eleven thousand dollars for. It. You know, we have another client's going to get another eight thousand dollars to get closed. Mm -hmm and wipe away all the debt. So we're set up to do this. We're doing it on a regular basis. We have about 30 or 40 going, you know, as properties on the market at one time, you know, so. Um, the other thing, oh, what, what you made me think about too is, is that um, to do this is not really, it's really not that difficult. I mean, you pick up the call, you initiate the process, we get things rolling. Um, the banks are really not asking for a profound amount of documentation. Um, you're really looking at gathering some bank statements together. You're looking at gathering your, your previous tax statements together. And they pretty much kind of get everything else. So uh, you don't need your loan documents from the original purchase. You don't need any of that documentation. So um, it's something you definitely definitely should look at. Yeah, well, they're, they're called streamlined. So. Yeah. Uh, all right, so why don't, why don't we wrap it up? You want to wrap it up with, uh, hopefully that gave you some information. You know, the best way to go, you know, of course, is call us, email us. Mm -hmm. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. If you are just looking to find out what, what options you have, we're happy to help you. And, right. and, and, and want to know the value of your property, yeah. let us know. We can give you a pretty good, accurate... Uh, right, and you know what? If it doesn't make sense, you know, we'll tell you. It doesn't make sense. Right. You should stay, you know. You should keep, you know, maybe you have a certain situation, which... You have a great loan, it's adjusting, whatever. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into the deal of the day. Is that what we want to oh, yeah, well, that's let's my wrap deal. It up, All right, it. here's my deal of the day, real quickly. Uh, this is a unique, interesting property. It's by HUD, and HUD has been dropping a lot of properties out on the property, uh, on the market lately, which has been fantastic. It's a three bedroom, two bath, single family with a garage in uh, the 3600 block of Walnut. It's currently listed for 200000 It is going to need some work, and it probably needs a good uh, facelift to bring up some good street presence but um, if I'm not mistaken this property is going to be open to all bidders tomorrow so if you're an investor you're looking for a flip property this is a good one and as I said it's going to be hitting the market uh, for investors we just sold one right around that on plat recently didn't we also yeah and we have another one on Walnut coming up at a, a little farther oh, that's north not, so this is 3600 that is oh this is in Linwood too so it's right on the right on the other side so Give us a call if you're interested. Yeah, you know the number, 800-804-9506. All right, and my deal of the day is another HUD. So, you know, um, we love HUD, we love BLB Resources, great clients of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's great to be able to sell these properties that have been taken back. This one is, and what's good about it is you can get three and a half percent down, you know, the owner-occupant loans. You know exactly audio. what you're walking into with an appraisal already being done on the property. Yeah. So if there's repairs, you know exactly how much. And I agree. Have detailed property condition reports. This one's four bedroom, two bath in Downey, 8318 Puritan Street. Familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Listed at 314. Two story home. Listed at 314. Um, this is going on the market. It's been on the market for about a week now and it'll be going to bidders uh, t tomorrow or the next day. It's going to be quick. So Yeah, Monday I think it opens up to everyone. All right, so I think we, let's wrap it up. Any questions, please uh, let us know. ShandraGroup.com is our website. Living Long Beach is the radio show. MarkShandra.com is where you're going to find all your short sale resource information. Did it make it? Oh, yeah.